Rolex is typically known as a pretty conservative company. But the Daytonas we will discuss today prove their designers also had a flair of the exotic as well. Much has been said about the Rolex Daytona and often it has been covered in many literature about Rolex from aficionados around the world. But this watch, the 116519 Beach Daytona hasn't been covered at all. So it's time to let the sand be your seat and let the waves move to the beat as we discuss today's watch, the Rolex Daytona Beach Daytona set. For this video, I'm wearing an 116589 Sacco. Sacco stands for Saphir Cognac. It is from the same period, even more exotic dial layout. And I like the color orange on the bezel. The nickname is the Leopard, so it might fit better in the jungle, but I'm sure it will do just fine on this private island. As pointed out earlier on, the coverage of the Daytona and its history has been published quite extensively. Uh, many different variations of the Cosmograph have been discovered in its 60 years of existence. But I have to say, very few are as outstanding and to some extent even obtrusive as the so-called beach examples that were introduced in the early zeros. The previous generation of Rolex renowned chronographs already had some remarkable pieces. Examples with gem settings or cool stone dials, uh, often available upon request. But few were as colorful as this commercially available series where they kicked off their six digit reference Daytona line with. Although it was officially marketed as a special edition, not numbered or limited, it was nicknamed The Beach. To emphasize the joie de vivre, Rolex made the unconventional choice to deliver these watches with color match matching accessories, as you can see here. For many reasons, I usually care a little about, about additional items around the watch, like papers, but how cool is this funky set? As per usual, we look at the case first. Ever since Rolex incorporated automatic calibers into the Cosmograph, the case size has been 40 millimeters. The last number of the reference, 9, refers to the use of 18 karat white gold on all external elements, including case back and bezel. The last mentioned featuring a different design compared to the steel counterpart. On a precious metal model, a feather font is used uh, and it also features triangles instead of uh, dots and it has a close track from 100 to 60. Lastly, the lugs are hooded therefore allowing to sport a leather strap without showing a gap between the case and band. However, this means one cannot attach a metal bracelet instead. Like in all oysters from this period, you can see the serial between the lugs at the six o'clock position. It is important to notice the Peach Daytona was only produced with P, K or early Y serial. Now for the crown. The screw down pushers are at the two and four o'clock position. In between, we find the crown protected by crown guards also seen on all automatic Daytonas. It features a trip lock mechanism to ensure no water will enter the watch, which comes in pretty handy at the beach. The use of white gold is indicated with the three dots underneath the coronet on the crown, with the one in the middle being slightly bigger. Now over to the bracelet and clasp, and I can tell you the fun doesn't stop here. Uh, the strap plays an important role in this model, and whilst most straps are still obtainable, the colored lizard straps from Rolex aren't anymore. The soft leather with fine texture is dyed in the same color of the dial, or accessories for that matter, uh, but it tends to slightly discolor over the years due to UV or moist. So these factors come into play in the valuability and the rarity of those bracelets. It's pretty rare to find one in perfect condition. Time to discuss the hands before we jump over to the colorful dials. Uh, 
And just like the regular early 1165XX series, the Beach Daytonas had slimmer hands, uh, which were as thin as their predecessors. However, since there's also no loom applied on the dial or in the markers, the hands feature black lacquer instead. Not unique to the Beach Daytonas, but worth noticing to spot if the dial or hands might have been swapped. The utmost important and remarkable of the watch in today's spotlight is without a doubt the dials. Four different dial colors that can be divided into two subcategories, Mother of Pearl and Hearthstone. Needless to say, Mother of Pearl and Oysters go hand in hand. Rolex used them in many different models, including earlier examples of the Daytona. For the yellow and pink variety, they also use this beautiful organic material, making each and every dial unique. Depending on the mollusk and the water, the colors vary. Rolex only uses the finest necker out there, with the best luster and smooth surface. The green and blue dial are made out of hardstone. Rolex used a variety of chalcedony for the first mentions, known as chrysoprase. The name derives from Greece and translates to green gold as it is compared to other chalcedonies, the most valuable one. The desirability is mainly because of its apple green color caused by nickel. Bear in mind, outside agents such as UV can deteriorate the brightness or uh, might have effect on the color of the dial. There are many misconceptions regarding the stone used for the dial of the blue variant, but it is calite, better known as turquoise. And I myself suspect Rolex from using either artificial or enhanced turquoise, therefore lacking the matrix of other minerals, resulting in a rather monochrome dial. Regardless, it looks stunning without a doubt. If we take a look at the layout, we have to conclude they only use the one with polished applied Roman indices. The quarters have black lacquer applied to the square markers. Furthermore, it doesn't feature unique details we can't find on any other models. Enough about the outside, a look under the hood of the Daytona is up next. Starting in the 60s with a manual wound caliber from Valjoux in their four digit references, to the late 80s where they adopted an automatic El Primero e Bausch for the 165XX series. But the popularity of the Daytona really started to take off when they developed their own automatic chronograph movement, which they started utilizing in the beginning of the new century. Uh, so this caliber 4130 that it has been named has been praised often but has little to do with the collectability or the value of the Beach Daytona. This special edition of the Rolex Daytona was offered with a retail price around 30k USD a piece. No records are known of someone buying all four simultaneously nor do they get offered as a set often. The only public offering was in 2015 when Philips sold all four slightly over 100k. This set was from the flamboyant Andrea Fofi, who happens to be my friend. And now it found a new home in the Netherlands where it was sold to a talented musician who happens to be an avid watch collector. But as the search and demand for rare and uncommon Rolexes grew over the years, the prices skyrocketed in the meantime. We are proud to showcase you the entire set. Albeit sold separately, as the papers disclose, it is still pretty unique. And before leaving you, I would like to share some extra information I encountered during my research. I stumbled upon the possible prototype, lacking the line of text officially certified on its turquoise dial. Unconfirmed, as I am left with merely this one picture. Another interesting find was a set with diamond encrusted bezel under reference 116589. Once again, without certainty of its origins, as also the blue one has the, the wrong handset. But there are also service replacement dials, so one must be careful to examine everything. And often, but not always, the later dials have a rounder O in Rolex, thicker white gold rings on sub dials, and square, squarer quarter markers. Uh, furthermore, I handled a uh, 116509 with turquoise dial and different light dial layout. Note the alignment of the text and thicker markers at the quarters, housing unknown faceted stones. I hope you enjoyed this watch guide and that the information was or will be useful. Yet, color speak louder than words. KOV is out and I'll see you on the next video.